destiny. There are some things that has been trying to destroy your anointing and threaten your progress. Hallelujah. Watch this that you don't have to stay in because you got the keys. Somebody all that I got the keys. I got the keys. Hey, what's up? Welcome to Relevant Online. We're so excited to have you worshiping with us today. We know so many of you are watching from all around the world. I believe that there's Jamaica, Canada, United States, everyone, even some of you here in the Bahamas, you're tuned in right now. Of course, in light of uh, the most recent governmental orders, we're under a full lockdown here in the Bahamas this weekend, but that's fine. We've got our campus over there in Port Charlotte, Florida, and Pastor Dury, our lead pastor, is standing by right now to bring you the word for today. Well, I just wanted to um, just kind of encourage you guys a little bit. I know this last few weeks or really the last couple of months may have been extremely tough for you. But here's what we're truly believing. We believe that, that God often uses crisis to strengthen us in our faith and to take us to a place that we've never been in him. Last week, of course, I, I, I spoke and I kind of encouraged you guys that God is stretching you in the midst of whatever it is that you're going through. You know, God often uses crisis to stretch us, to increase our capacity, to increase what we can handle so that he can give us and bless us with more. And so that's what I believe is truly taking place in this time and in this season of your life. Rather than questioning God and asking him uh, what's actually happening around the world, Maybe try asking him the question, God, what lesson can I learn from this? And so it's time for us to kind of change our perspective. The last few weeks here at Relevant Kingdom Center has been absolutely incredible. I mean, we had a series called Face Your Giants. Where we're able to, to face, we're able to confront and to conquer some things head on um, that's standing in the way of God's promises um, to us. And so the last few weeks has been awesome. And we just want to encourage you guys for staying faithful, staying committed. Every time you jump on one of these live streams, you're staying connected to the mission, the vision, and the call of God on your life. And so this week, however, we're kicking off a brand new sermon series called Reset. Yes, we believe in that God right now wants to give the entire world a reset. God wants to give you a reset in your life individually. And so over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about, um, about this, this word reset. And we're going to be looking at several topics of what God wants to reset. And so um, just before we get into the experience today, I just wanted to come and again welcome you guys to our Sunday morning experience. I believe that today is going to be an absolute blessing to your life. And so here's what I want you to do. Right before this countdown ends, I want you to go ahead, click that like that share button if you're on Facebook. Start a watch party right now because somebody's life is about to be changed because you shared this live broadcast. And so if you're on Facebook, share this stream. Those of you on our online campus, click that invite button right below this video. Invite somebody to tune in because God wants to give them a reset. Right before we get into the message today, let's take you live to our campus in Port Charlotte, Florida for a time of worship. On and put those hands together and let's give God some praise today. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, Jesus. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb. Till I met you, I was breathing but not alive. And all my failures I tried to hide. It was my tomb, Jesus, till I met you. You call my name and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness into your 
glorious day you call my name and I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day come on lift him up today he's worthy Your mercy has saved my soul. Thank you, Lord. And your freedom is all I know. The old made new. Jesus, when I met you, you call my name. Out of the darkness into your glorious day, you call my name, and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day, come on and lift them up if you know that you're free today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. This is our testimony. This is our story. When we needed him, he was there. I needed rescue. I soon was heavy. Chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter. I was in your heart. You called me a citizen. Come on, say. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open. Cause when you call my name, I ran out of that grave. Woo! Out of the darkness into your glorious day. You call my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into his glorious day. Come on and lift him up, if you know you're free today. Woo! Oh, Lord, we bless your name. Thank you for freedom, Lord. Come on and bless him today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, we bless your name. We lift you up and we worship you. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you that your presence is with us. Your presence is here, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord, that anytime we need you, we can run into your arms. Just lift your hands up behind the screen right now. And just begin to worship. Father, we worship you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We love your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, sing it if you know it. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Matchless love and beauty and Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Because your prayer. Is heaven to me? Come on, I don't know about you, but his presence is everything. Your presence is heaven to me. weakness in my weakness you are 
Hallelujah. Come on and bless the name of the Lord. His presence is heaven to me. I'm so grateful that we can run into the arms of the Lord and into his presence. Hey, Relevant Online and all of you guys that are following us online. I mean, it's just been amazing these past few weeks how we've been able to still gather at times and how we've been able to still come into your homes and through your phones, on your computer, your laptops, wherever um, you know you've been watching us. And I can tell you that it is a very interesting few weeks in the, in the world, in fact. And so right now, we know that we're in a predicament that is very precarious, but it is an opportunity, I believe, with all my heart, for God to get glory. We want to welcome you to Relevant Kingdom Center's experience today online only. Of course, for the last few weeks, we've had the opportunity to gather there in Exuma, Bahamas, and we've had an incredible time gathering, but due to circumstances, um, you know, with the COVID situation, now our Prime Minister has mandated us um, to kind of social distance again, and it is for the protection of one another, as protection of yourself, your family, your community, and in fact, the nation, and so we're going to honor that, and what we're going to do is we're going to do whatever it takes to bring the good news of the gospel to you right where you are are and so today i'm excited because we get to bring to you online a brand new series this past few weeks had been incredible as we talked about facing the giants and then of course our campus pastor blessed our hearts last weekend when he talked about expansion and understanding what god was doing how god was stretching you and why god was stretching you and so today we're getting ready to go into a brand new sermon series here's what i need you to do guys i need you to go ahead like the stream I need you to help us to get the word to the world. People need the word more than anything else right now. There's a lot of bad news and now they need good news. So I want you to like the stream and not only like the stream, here's what I want you to do. I want you to share it. I want you to share it with friends, family. Come on, you can do it. I want you to like and I want you to share because I believe today what God's getting ready to speak in this new sermon series as we launch it off today. I believe that it's going to be a great blessing to you. Well, today we're getting ready to go into a sermon series called Reset, Reset. And today I'm going to go to a text that I believe um, is going to bless us today. It comes from Exodus chapter 14, verse 12. It says this, didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve Egyptians than to die in the desert. Today, if we could tie a topic to the first sermon in the series of Reset, it would be Mindset Reset. I want you to type that into the, into the chat box right now. I want you to type that into the comment section. If you're on our online campus, I want you to type that in. Say Mindset Reset. Come on. Mindset Reset. That's what we're going to be speaking on today. Father, bless your word. Pray that it would bless your people. I pray that, Father God, that I would decrease, you would increase, and that you would speak through me in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. What does it mean to reset? It means to go back and set again, to adjust, to go back and fix that which was broken. And I believe that we are in a moment and in a season and in a time of resetting where God is taking us back to where he needs us to be so that we can fix the things that have been broken for quite a long time in our life. It's amazing that sometimes we can go through life and not even realize that there are certain things that are broken because we've come accustomed, hallelujah, to dysfunction. Let me say it again. We've come, we've become well acquainted with dysfunction function to the point that we settle in dysfunction that we that we kind of just live through dysfunction and i believe that is as, as as god is now getting the world to a place where he can get our attention that he is re setting us where he is trying to help us to see the dysfunction where he's trying to help us to see the things that are broken that need to be fixed and a lot of times in our hearts and in our minds we can be so dysfunctional we can be so broken that God has to do something drastic just to get our attention and God has to allow some things just to get our attention and I want to parenthetically insert this that even if God didn't cause it God will use it let me say it again i like that i want to rewind that thing and bring it back again even if god didn't cause something he will use something 
And I believe that while I've got to be careful in saying that this was God's doing, that God was punishing a people, no, I won't, I, won't be da- I won't dare to speak on behalf of God. But here's what I will say. I will say this, that even if God didn't cause this pandemic to hit the world, I believe that he's going to use this pandemic that hits the world. He's going to use it so that he could get glory from it. Let me say it again. He's going to use whatever we're going through to get glory from it. And I am here to let somebody know from the offset that even though you may be going through some difficulties in life even though this thing has been precarious and this pandemic has been in a place where it feel like you are going to be set back I believe with all my heart that God is going to use what is seemingly a setback to set you up so that he could bring you up and elevate you into another level that what may have been a setback is really a reset hallelujah let me say it again what may have been a setback is really really a reset and God is adjusting God is fixing God is causing to make something better that was broken and I believe that in the midst of all that's going on that there is a resetting of the body of Christ that there is a resetting of hearts that there's a resetting watch this of minds And today, I believe that that is what God wants to do. He wants to reset not just your heart, but he wants to reset your mind. Why? Because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And I believe that in this moment, that God is getting his people to the place where he is getting their attention enough so that, watch this, he can fix the broken mind, so that he could fix the broken heart, that he could fix the broken life. It's something that whenever we're going through something, we learn to call on God in the midst of our difficult times and the moment we pass through it it's like we revert right back to being broken again and I believe that this time God wants all of you or none of you come on now somebody he doesn't want you to just be lukewarm he wants you to either be cold or hot amen and I rather be hot for him I I rather be on fire for him I'd rather I rather burn for him and some of us God can only get us to burn when he's carrying us through the breaking but I believe that God wants to get us to the place where he resets our heart and our mind so much that even after we get through what we're going through we're still going to pursue him we're still going to run after him with all of our hearts with all of our minds with all of our soul and I believe that in this moment and in this season that God is resetting his people that God is readjusting that God is fixing that God is bringing that thing that was broken to the place that he could now make it whole again what is broken I believe that we've got a lot of broken families that God wants to reset I believe that we had a lot of broken marriages and a lot of broken relationship that God wants to reset But most importantly, I believe that we had a lot of broken minds that God wants to reset. And here's the thing, the enemy, why is this first message important? Because I believe that the enemy is going to plague your mind in the midst of this circumstance. The enemy is going to try to make you confused, depressed. Hallelujah. The enemy is going to try to cause you to get stuck in a thinking, thinking because of the circumstances you're in. But if you would just allow the Holy Spirit to touch your heart, and to touch your mind even in the midst of everything that you're going through I believe that God is getting ready to give you a new mind I believe that God is going to cause your mind to be that of the mind of Christ that even in the midst of opposition you see opportunity even in the midst of pain your mind is so fixed on him that you can still praise even in the midst of setbacks you can see it as a setup why because your mind is being touched your mind is being molded your mind is being renewed your mind is being reset to the place that God needs it to be here in our text we recognize that Israel had started to complain to God Israel had complained to God and Israel was not just complaining to God but they were complaining to Moses because they were going through a lot of difficulty in the desert here it is that God had now made a promise to them that they were going to this lush place of plenty that they were going to a promised land and yet in between Egypt and in between the promised land there was a desert of difficulty and I'm just here to tell somebody that you've got to be careful that you don't allow the enemy to plague your mind in the middle of your Egypt and your promised land see here is what the problem with Israel was their mind had now been so attacked that they had their mind set watch this 
in Egypt when God was trying to get their mind fixed and focused on the promise. Yeah. And so before he can get them to the promise, he had to purge them. He had to purify them. He had to break some stinking thinking. He had to take them through some stuff or allow them to go through some stuff so that when they get to the promise, they wouldn't squander it. That when they get to the promise, they wouldn't mess it up. And so here it is that Israel, as they were going through their per predicament, as they were going through this precarious time and moment, here's what they said to, to Moses. They said it would have been better for you to have left us in Egypt so that you would not just bring us out here to die in the desert. But here is what Israel was missing in the moment. What they didn't know was that God was not going to start something that he was not going to finish. Let me say it again. He is Alpha and the Omega. He is the first and the last. He is a finishing God. And when God had brought them out of Egypt, it was because he had a promised place for them. And I still believe that even though that this year may not have been the year that you expected, that this is the year that God had allowed because God is bringing you in between your Egypt and your promise. Come on now, somebody. You're in between your Egypt and your promise. You're in between and the in between can be difficult but if you can make it in the in between I believe that you're going to get to the place where you're going to find that the blessings of God is going to rest on you like never before it's time then now for you to make sure that your mindset is reset what am I saying you cannot allow the enemy to plague your mind and bring you to the place where you doubt God come on now you cannot allow the enemy to plague your mind and bring you to the place where you start complaining more than you're praising you cannot allow the enemy to plague your mind and bring you to the place where you start believing where you start believing the negative rather than believing the positive and believing the word that God spoke over your life. Listen to me. He didn't bring you this far to leave you. He, he did not bring you out of Egypt to let you die in a desert. I believe that there is a promise ahead of you and if you could allow your mind to be focused and not allow your mind to be set back but understand that this is a setup and God is just resetting some stuff. He is going to take you to everything that he promised for you and I don't know who I'm speaking to but there's somebody here that may feel like you're getting ready to die in your desert but I'm here to tell you get your mind fixed hallelujah get your mind renewed because at the end of the day God ain't about to let you die in this desert come on he is a God of his word and he will stick to his promises I need somebody online to just give God a praise I need somebody to say I know that's right I believe that there is somebody here that felt like they wouldn't make it but this is your boost today and God is letting you know that no matter what it seems like no matter what you're going through you won't die in your desert here is the problem with Israel there they 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 were going toward the promise but their mind was still stuck in the past hallelujah they would have rather dealt with dysfunction than to go through the challenge to take them to the place of promise. Let me say it again. They would have rather dealt with dysfunction than to deal with the challenge that would take them to the place of promise. And there are some people that are, watch this, their mindset is a settling mindset because they understand that, you know what, if I don't settle, then I'm going to be stretched. And a lot of people don't like being stretched. But I believe that this is the moment, the season, and the time where God is getting ready to stretch you. Come on. And you cannot have your mind set in a settled place. And you cannot allow yourself to get comfortable in dysfunction. I don't know who you are. I don't know where you are. But there's somebody that's watching that you've been settled with dysfunction. But today I declare that you are getting ready to allow the Holy Spirit to stretch you. Hallelujah. To take you to the place where God promised you regardless of the pain that you may be presently going through regardless of the precarious predicament that you're in i believe that you cannot allow your mindset <clears throat> to be settled you cannot allow yourself to settle into what god is trying to deliver you from they said it would have been better for us to stay in egypt their mind needed a reset it's amazing that we could seemingly be on our way towards promise, but yet our mind is still stuck in past. Hallelujah. The enemy is going to try to cause you to wish for past days rather than dealing with the present day. 
because what you don't understand is your present day is better than your past days because your present day is preparing you and propelling you toward the promise that God has for you. I want to say it again. Your present day, no matter how bad it may seem, is what God is using to stretch you, to take you toward the promise and to the place that he had promised you. See, here's what I got to tell you about mindset. See, your mind, whatever your mind full of will begin to manifest in your life. Let me say it again. Whatever you're mindful of will begin to manifest in your life. If you have your mind set on something, your mind will be full of that thing. Your mind full of that thing. And so it will begin to manifest itself in your life. And there are a lot of people that the enemy has caused their minds to be set on past. The, the enemy has caused their minds to be set on failures. The, the enemy has even caused their minds to be set on what they're going through presently. But here's why I wore my Beyond shirt today because I wanted to remind Relevant Kingdom Center, I wanted to remind those that are watching us that this is still the year of beyond, where we've got to have enough spiritual fortitude, where we've got to have enough focus that sees beyond the present into what God's doing, that we don't allow our, our minds to be set on something that God is bringing us from, that we don't desire to go back to it. They said it would have been better for us to die in the desert. Here's what I believe. I believe that God is now breaking some things off of your life. He is readjusting some things in your life so that you could be who he's called you to be. Here's the thing. Some of us have been complaining against things then that is used to strengthen us. The desert was not meant to kill Israel. The desert was meant to strengthen Israel. What was God doing? God had to reset their mindsets from all of the things that they have endured for the past few hundred years under Egypt. God had to break some things off of them so that he could completely use them the way he desired to. And so in this moment, I believe that there is a reset taking place of the mind, a reset taking place of the heart, a reset taking place. And you cannot allow your mind to go backwards. You've got to allow your mind to go forward. So here's what the Bible says, as a man thinks, it says this in Proverbs 23, verse 7, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Listen to me, don't let the enemy get into your mind to the place and to the point that you're discouraged and you feel defeated and you feel like you're going to die. Don't allow the enemy to confuse you. Don't allow the enemy to steal your joy. Don't allow the enemy to steal your peace. <clears throat> And most of all, don't allow the enemy to steal the promises that God has over your life. Don't allow your mind to get plagued by the pain, but allow your mind to get set on the future. Here is why I believe that this was important for us to start off with, because I can be honest with you and transparent with you. These past few weeks, I found myself struggling and fighting with depression to the point that I was struggling because I was like, God, this is not what you promised. This, this present place doesn't look anything like the promised place. And it felt like, you know what? Everything was getting set back. But yet God had to remind me one day through the word. And because and, I found myself wishing for past days uh, and wishing I could have a do over and, and wishing we could go backward. And, and it brought me to the scripture of Israel where when they were in their desert place, they started to wish that they could go back to Egypt. And yet God had to remind me that during I am not surprised by anything that is happening right now. Let me say it again. God is not surprised. This is why we got to get our minds right. Because while we may be surprised, God was never surprised. So God had to remind me, Dury, I am not surprised by what is taking place. And I have already prepared you to go through what you're going through. And I'm preparing a place for you that if you didn't go through this, you couldn't get to it. Hallelujah. I got to say it again. If you didn't go through this, you couldn't get to it. And I believe that we're going through this to get to it. What is it? It is the place of promise. It is the place that God has ordained for us. And so in this season, I believe that we've got to get our minds set. Let me leave you with three important points that God had spoke to me. One, in the place of a desert or in the place where it feels like there's a lot of pain, here's how you get a mindset reset. One, you've got to have deep 
and you've got to have genuine repentance. Let me say it again, genuine repentance. I believe that a part of getting a mindset reset is to allow ourselves to get to the place where we realize that we are flawed, where we realize that, you know what, we need him, and that maybe we've been in a place where we have not allowed him to have all of us. And God wants all of us in this season. And so this has got to be a place of deep repentance. In order for us to have a mindset reset, we've got to say to God, I am willing to get rid of the old way of thinking, the old man. I'm not going to be worried about Egypt. I'm not going to desire Egypt anymore. I'm going to look forward to what you have for me. And so there's got to be a place of deep repentance. And I believe that God is calling nations. I believe that God is calling prime ministers and presidents to a place of deep repentance. I believe that God is calling the church to a place of deep repentance where we can now get to the place where he allow where we allow him to purify us come on now somebody because the bible declares that if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves seek my face and watch this turn from their wicked ways then I will hear from heaven and what will I do? I will heal their land. And I believe that in this moment of resetting there has to be a deep repentance. And then of course in a moment of resetting for a mindset reset, <clears throat> I believe that there has to be a, a deep reflection, not dwelling on the past, but a reflection that is more for introspection. Let me say it again. A reflection that is more for introspection, where we look into ourselves and we reflect on what things we've prioritized, uh, 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 what things that we had put ahead of God when we shouldn't have had it ahead of him. Come on, a deep time of reflecting so that we can fix the thing that was broken that we didn't even realize that was dysfunctional. So repentance, reflection. And then I believe that in order for us to have a true mindset reset, we've got to be able to get to the place where we understand that God is a God of reward, that God is not a man that he should lie. Listen to me. God is not going to leave you here. God's not going to leave you in the midst of the mess that you're in. This is your moment for resetting. This is your moment for readjusting. This is the moment where God is going to fix what was broken. This is the moment where I believe that God is going to even give you some new mindsets. Come on, that God's going to give you some new ideas. That God is getting ready to shed some things off of you that was holding you back so that he could get you to the reward that he has for you. Reset your mind. The Bible says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. You've got to make sure that your mind in this moment is guarded and guided by the Holy Spirit. Don't let your mind get guided and, and, and misguided by the world. You hear me? Because there's a lot of things that are going to be said on your television broadcast. There's a lot of things that are going to be said on your social media platforms but you've got to allow your mind to be guided by god let this mind be in you that is in christ jesus the bible says that we ought to renew our minds how do i get this mindset reset by repenting by reflecting for introspection and then also by making sure that there is a renewal process going on in this moment listen in this moment you need a deep devotion a deep devotion that carries you to the place where you understand that you know what i need renewal i need refreshing so don't look at this thing as a negative look at it as a positive look at it as as if god's giving us a reset a moment and a time that you could literally refresh yourself spend time in his presence spend time seeking after him S spend time allowing him to fill you and refill you and renewing your mind to the place that watch this in the midst of all that's going on you still have your mind set on the promises of God because here's the thing whatever you choose to put your mind on will manifest itself in your life here's my bottom line here's my bottom line today my bottom line is, mind your mind. Take this time to allow God to take you to a place where you can have a mindset reset because your future depends on it. <laughs> mind your mind. Because in the middle of difficult times, in the middle of the desert seasons, we could start wishing that we were back in Egypt. I don't want to do over 
I want God to continue to take me through so that he could take me too. Because you're not going to die in this present place. Let your mind be reset in this moment. Allow God to readjust. Allow God to fix the thing that was broken. Don't have a settling mind. Don't have a dysfunctional mind. Don't have a mind that, that don't have a bad mentality. Don't have a limited mentality. Don't have a victim mentality. Have a victor mentality. Have a mentality that says that our God can do all things but fail. Have a mentality that says, you know what? Our God is going to stick to his promises. Allow your mindset to be reset in this moment. Over the next few weeks, we're going to get deeper. I just wanted to kind of skim the surface and talk about this resetting that I believe that God was getting ready to do. And I believe it starts with our mind. Because you could be in the middle of your difficulties, your difficult situation, and you could allow your mind to still be broken. Just like Israel, here they were toward the promise that God had for them. A faithful God who was not going to fail them. But because they encountered difficulty, they started to wish they were back in Egypt. Don't start going back to your past. Don't start to give up and doubt God. If it's any time now that you need to, you need to pursue him more. So allow your mind to be full of what God has said and what God has promised. Mind your mind and don't allow your mind to be set on the past but allow your mind to be reset so that you could go towards the reward that God has for you. I believe that God's going to do something incredible. Come on, I'm not settling dysfunction. I don't know about you. I am not settling in dysfunction. I want to go to the place that God has ordained. I want to be better. And if this is what it takes for me to be better, if, if I've got to go through it, God may not have, listen to me, I want to say it again. God may not have caused it, but God can use it. And so I'm going to allow him to use this circumstance, this situation to make me a better husband, to make me a better father, to make me a better pastor, to make me a better influencer. I am going to allow this moment not to break me, but to make me because I know that God is not bringing me through this to break me to the place that he kills me, but he is using this to take me to the place that he's going to bless me. And I believe that he's doing the same for you. Come on, I want to pray. Father, I pray right now for every person watching. Allow their minds to be set on the right thing in this season. Allow their minds to be reset where there is a deep repentance, a genuine repentance. There is a deep reflection and that there is a focus on the God of their reward. I declare now that they won't die in this desert, but that they're going to see you as faithful. I declare now that their mind is going to be set on what is ahead and not on what is behind. I declare that their mind, even in the midst of this present predicament, will not be discouraged, will not be confused, will not be victims, will not be limited. But Father God, that they would have a mindset of victors, that they would have a mindset that you can still do all things but fail, and that this is only a setup for what you've got in store. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Listen, I hope you were blessed by today's experience. Um, I believe that as we go through this, that God's going to see us through this. I believe that God's going to see the, the Bahamas through it. God's going to see the United States. God's going to see nations through it because they are righteous people, I believe. And I believe that God is still going to use these moments so that he could bring in a great harvest. I'm prepared for what God has prepared for me. And I'm going to allow my mindset not to be set back, but to be reset so that I could get my reward. God bless you, and I hope that we'll see you soon. Listen, our campus pastor is going to come back. He's going to encourage you to tell you how you can continue to sow into the ministry. And then, of course, for those of you that have a need, man, if we can be there for you, let us know. Um, we'll try to be there the way we can, as best as we can. If you need prayer, if you need help, you know, reach out to us because we want to make sure that you know that God cares for you. You're not going to die in this desert. God's got greater for you. I'll see you soon. Wow, what a powerful and timely word today. God is giving you a reset. Whatever that may be, whatever that may mean to you, God wants to let you know that it's not too late to start over. Yes, he can erase everything that you have done and he can give you a fresh 
start. As a matter of fact, we believe that eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, neither has it entered the hearts of men, the things that God has in store for those who love him. And so that's what we're believing God for you today, a fresh start in every area of your life. I know things may seem tough. I know um, you may have so many questions. Things may, f uh, f may seem hopeless, but God wants to give you a fresh start. I believe that so many of you were blessed today by this experience. As a matter of fact, before you leave, or there may be some of you right now watching, and you may um, be saying in your heart that I can't leave this live stream. I was so blessed today that I can't leave here without sowing a seed into this ministry. Then we won't stop you. But we want you to know that if this is your very first time watching us, we simply just wanted to be a blessing to you. We wanted to get this word to you. Um, those of you watching that's our members, that's our followers, um, of course, you already know that you can give simply by visiting our website at relevantkingdomcenter.com forward slash give. You'll see a slide coming across the screen with some more information. You can also give through Cash App. Um, that's hash, that's uh, RKC Florida. And so these, these are just some ways that you can partner with us to help us continue uh, spreading the gospel. Of course, if you're watching us on Facebook or our online campus, our host right now is putting a link in the chat that will assist you with how you can give online. Well, it's been an incredible experience today. Just a few announcements to let you know what's happening this week. We want you guys to please continue to stay connected. Um, it's been amazing. It's been a blessing to see so many of you week after week. You know, though we were just able to gather physically uh, the past two weeks, but it's been a blessing to see so many of you engaging with us online. That's uh, through our Zoom platforms. We have our Wednesday Bible studies. That's WWE that takes place every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Listen, just because we're in this lockdown and um, we're still going through this phase, it doesn't mean we cannot gather. Okay, so we want to encourage you to please, guys, join us every Wednesday at 7 p.m. sharp. That's for our Gap Standards prayer time. And then, of course, every Monday at 5 a.m., we've been gathering also on Zoom for a time of prayer. And all of these uh, uh, gatherings have been absolutely powerful and it's going to continue to help you strengthen your faith in this season and in this time. Well, again, we want to say a special thank you for tuning in with us. You're tuned into one of the most powerful places on the planet. Be sure that you like and follow us online to stay updated with everything that's happening here at the church. If you missed a part of today's experience, um, it's going to be available on our website today. You can check back at 7 p.m. You'll be able to watch the rebroadcast of the experience, and it'll also be available on demand moving forward. But once again, we want to say a special thank you for worshiping with us, and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you for watching Relevant Online. Consider becoming a Relevant Partner with us and sow a financial gift of any amount to help us continue our mission and get the word to the world. We can only do it with your generous support. Visit us online at relevantkingdomcenter.com slash give. Relevant Kingdom Center is one church in two locations, Eczema, Bahamas, and Port Charlotte, Florida. Be our guest and visit any one of our campuses. RKC, it's not just another church, it's a movement.